Weather events claimed 48 lives in Oklahoma in 2013. That's more than the previous two years combined. In 2013, 14 people died in Oklahoma flooding events, mostly in the Moore tornado area. Flooding often accompanies springtime severe weather. For instance, last June in Henrietta, more than 100 had to flee fast rising water. Torrential rains caused Coal Creek to burst its banks. Flooding left Main Street underwater and damaged 20 homes. 40 people trapped by high water had to be rescued, including folks in a nursing home. So to avoid becoming another flood statistic, heed these warnings. If public safety officials issue an evacuation order, leave. Get to the safety of higher ground immediately. If you're out driving and see water covering the road up ahead, here's a simple rhyme. Turn around, don't drown. And if you see high water barricades across the road, don't go around them. Getting where you want to go isn't worth risking your life or the lives of others who might be called out to try to save you. Lightning and high winds with many severe storms can knock out power. If you lose electricity during or after a storm, here's what you need to do. Have flashlights and batteries on hand. Flashlights are safer than candles. If you have a gas powered generator, use it outside in a well ventilated area. And don't try to power more items than it's designed to handle. Food in the fridge should be safe as long as the temperature in the refrigerator doesn't go above 40 degrees. And if the power is out for more than four hours, it's safer to store perishable foods in a cooler packed with ice. The deadly tragedy of last May's Moore tornado reminds us of the need for school storm shelters. But the expense makes that difficult. Two News reporter Marla Carter shows us one way the state is helping with a plan that doesn't cost the district a penny. First, there was the Moore tornado, an EF-5 that devastated a community. Just as the community was healing, another EF-5 hit 11 days later, just west of Moore in El Reno. We came home to flattened house, nothing. Melissa Little lost her home. Here's what was left. And just went back the next day and started trying to clean up and salvage. Then another blow. Melissa's second home was also hit. You monkeys, you, he said, shaking a finger at him. Her you daycare, a place Melissa considers family. The child care facility is part of the El Reno School District. We had a large basketball, ball, volleyball size hell come through one of our walls. Caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. The good news? We closed for the summer, so we did not have any children here. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Still, after experiencing two hits from the same storm, Melissa knows the impact a twister can have all too well. We need, you know, all the protection we can because it's Oklahoma. That's just what the El Reno School District is working to do, thanks to a program called Safe Schools 101. The program brings engineers, architects, and district leaders together to go through schools and examine areas where students can take shelter, sometimes discovering new areas that the district never even thought of. It gave us a different perspective. Roger Robler is the school safety director for El Reno Public Schools. He toured district buildings with those experts. And really look at, okay, if we were to have a 250 mile an hour wind event, what would happen to this building? What would happen to the students in this building? Eventually, the schools in our area will be able to take part in the Safe Schools program, too. Yay. As for El Reno, the district plans to use bond money and FEMA dollars to build shelters. That's peace of mind for Melissa as she watches over both of her families. Marla Carter, 2 News Works for you. Following the Moore tornado, state lawmakers beefed up a law to keep students, faculty, and staff safer in schools. It requires public school districts to have a disaster preparedness plan and update it annually. Those plans must be shared with all first responders within the district's boundaries by November 1st each year. Last November, the two news investigators found many districts failed to send plans to all the agencies. A spot check in March found eight districts in Tulsa County alone still hadn't, although our calls did prompt Bixby and Glenpool to fully comply. To protect your children, ask if their school's plans are filed with all first responders in the district. One thing that often strikes during severe weather outbreaks, it's lightning. In 2012, one Oklahoman was killed by lightning. When you're outside and hear thunder or see lightning, avoid high places and open fields. Isolated trees, open sided picnic shelters, baseball dugouts, light poles and metal fences. Also, avoid convertible cars, golf carts and water like pools, lakes or rivers. If you're inside during thunderstorms, 
avoid using telephones with cords, computers, and running water through the plumbing. When we come back, the app that helps keep you safe even when the power goes out, plus all the details on how you can win a safe room for your home.